time for me to present. Just join me if you know the song. You want to worship God. Amen. You're not ready. Okay, let me sing another one. I have a song before I told them yesterday. Amen. He put you on your demand. He put you on your beret. He put a fan on your mega moon. On your pull on your bazoo. He might be a go go. He can Before it happens, they've already seen it. Some people can't show them in their dream. 
The problem is that we are not sensitive to it. Amen. Amen. Now you want to want to pray this prayer. Just lift up your hands. Say, Oh God. Oh God. Turn my body to eyes. Turn my body, my body to eyes. From my, my toe. From my head to my toe. Let it become eyes. Our pastor that came last week was he told us a story. How he went to a, to he went to a lady and told the lady, God will give you a child. When he turned his back, the lady did that. It takes a man who has eyes all over his body to see that. If I turn like this, we are not, I will not know what's happening behind. Amen. Amen. So what am I saying? We need spiritual eyes. We need eyes all over our body. Before the enemy attacks your children, you should be able to decode it. You should be able to see it in the spirit. Open your mouth and say, Oh God! Oh God! Turn my body to eyes! Turn, Turn my body, body to eyes! eyes. Turn my body to eyes. My body to eyes. My body to Amen. Amen. You may be seated, sit on the head of your enemy this morning and put your hands together for Jesus. So the wrong truth is teaching. Hallelujah. Our um, topic today is not the truth, the king of the women convention. So I'm going to say something. No more tears. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to join my faith with every woman in this house. I want to declare and say, there will be no more pain in your life and there will be no more loss in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whatever has caused you tears up to this time, may God put an end to it perpetually in your lives. You are not saying amen like you believe it. If you don't believe it, I believe it for you. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. This morning I'm going to be preaching or teaching or talking on the topic that says end tears. Amen. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, End tears. Yes. Say, End tears. Yes. Say, yes. yes. say it like you believe it. Amen. Yes. Yes. Quickly, let's go to Psalm chapter 34, 15. Hallelujah. Psalm 34, verse 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. Somebody say amen. amen. Quickly go to 15. Sorry, go to um, 16. Okay. He said, The face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. 17, please. He said, The righteous cry, and the Lord hear it, and deliver them out of all their troubles. 18. He said, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Saved such has been of a contrite spirit. 19, the last verse, please. He said, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of how many? Out of how many? Church, can I hear your voices? He said, The Lord do what? From some. Oh. Amen. 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 Quickly go to John chapter 11, 32. We just run it through the scriptures so that when I enter the message, there will be no go slow. Hallelujah. Amen. John chapter 11, verse 32. Are you there? Okay, God bless you. It says, Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hadest been here, 33, sorry, my brother had not died. 
When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping which came with her, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And said, Where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. 35, which is the last verse, says what? Jesus wept. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to um, Psalm 30, verse 5. Psalm 30, verse 5. See, for his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor in life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes when? When? In the morning. And that is where I take my message from this morning. I want to speak to those sets of people who maybe somehow you've asked God questions over and over again in your life. Today is the 1st of November. So many people woke up this morning from their beds and they were asking God, God, this is 2020 and here we are in November. The year is coming to an end. Am I going to remain like this? Maybe you are that person that the doctor has given you a report that is not good to your spirit. Maybe you are that person who is having a series of challenges in your life. Maybe you are that person who your children are giving you consign as a woman. I'm, I've come here this morning to stand before you. And the Lord has asked me to tell you that weeping may endure for a night, but your joy is coming. Amen. Your joy will come in the morning. Amen. You may have cried last night. You may have been asking God as a young man, as a young woman, when will I settle down? When is my change coming? I have come this morning to tell you that the God which I serve and call is here to help your tears. And it's here to help afflictions in your life. Because the Bible says affliction will not rise up the second time. Troubles of life are normal. I want you to understand that. Crying is, 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 is not, it's not okay to cry. It's okay to cry. When you go through emotional depression, you cry. When things are not going the way you, the way they ought to go, you cry. It's okay. It's okay to cry. Even Jesus wept in John 11, 35. But the good news is, your tears is coming to an end. Amen. The prayer you prayed this year, you will not pray it next year. Amen. That is my prayer for you as a woman and as a man in this house. That thing that has been giving you challenges. I have come and I hide under the grace of my father. And I speak to that life. Today marks the end of struggles in your life. As a young woman, as a young man in this house, you are saying, God, when am I going to settle down? Look at all my friends. They are, they are advancing in life. They have they 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 gotten married or whatever. They are advancing in their businesses. I speak to you this morning. Your time has come. Your time has come. Your time has come.
himself he went. I've come to tell you this morning. I've come to tell you. No matter what the case may be, no matter the doctor's report, no matter the reports you are getting from your children, no matter the reports you are getting as a human being, that is contrary to what you desire. I pray this morning, may you receive the grace to encourage yourself in the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. I've written that you say crying is a shedding of tears in an emotional state of pain. Amen. There are two, there are two types of cry. There is a cry of joy and there is a cry out of pain. This morning, the only tears you are permitted to share in this house will be the tears of joy. The tears of pain will no longer be your portion. In the name of Jesus. You will not share the tears of pain anymore. Because the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night. I want to speak to someone. I don't know who you are. Your morning has come. Yeah. I say your morning yeah. has come. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. There are different types of tears. When you go through lack, you go through scarcity. Depression, name it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Our daughter was telling us something about the COVID. I was just saying to myself, I may not know all these guidelines, but I know the cure. Amen. Do you know the cure? Yeah. How many of us know the cure? Yeah. And she said something towards the end. He said, there is no vaccine for this COVID. When this thing started in uh, February or whatever, I looked at myself. I looked at my family. In my mind, all of us got scared. Nobody, no matter who you are. Everybody got scared at the beginning. When we started watching the news, the rate at which people were dying, the one that, <laughs> no, these people will not kill somebody. And she said something I love. He said, don't watch CNN. Yes. Those people will deceive you. You, you, you just die in depression for nothing. For nothing. I'm, I know of countless people who have contacted this thing and God has delivered them. Yes. I know of countless. I can stand here without turning my face and count like 20. I will, I will give you names of 20 people I know personally that have contacted it. I was telling my daughter something, in the, my daughter in children, I was telling her, I said, I said, just watch, look around you. Have you ever seen any believer that died of this COVID? Ask yourself, what does that tell you? That tells you that our God is able to deliver you for any form of affliction. Yes, do, you know, observe all the protocols, do all the guidelines, do everything. But look around you. Look back home. Look around you here. Have you seen any believer? Ask yourself now. If you've seen, raise up your hand. Say, I know a believer that has died of this. Raise your hand. Our God is able, is capable of delivering us from every form of affliction. Yeah. When it started, I looked at myself, I'm like, people are dying. People are dying. When it's coming, I said, push, 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 push. <laughs> We did all of that. We did, we do one. As it's coming, stretch to the bathroom. Push. <laughs>
This thing that I just said it started from your from abroad. I said no, it's not, it's not from China. They said you people are over there now. They say it's coming from there. And what is the cure now? I said you push your best time. Okay, we are all laughing. Because we'll be we'll be delivered. And that is the wish and the promise of God for us. It should come to us. It's China people, China people. She said, hey, these China people will kill somebody. Okay, my daughter, what is the cure now? I said, my mommy, they have not discovered any cure. And guess what she said? An old woman, she said, now Jesus be the cure. She said, now Jesus be the cure. And that is sunk in my spirit. From that day, I said, Jesus is the cure of COVID. Let them bring that all the vaccine. Is it not becoming a normal thing today? And under this auction, I speak to you. Your family, your homes are preserved. Amen. You will not be partakers of the sickness of the Gentiles. Because you will be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. So when you go through challenges, go through difficulties, when you cry, it's okay. It's okay. It's emotional. If you don't have emotion, you can shed tears. What is what is what, what what is what is tears anyway? What is these tears we're talking about? It's just a liquid substance coming out of your eyes. It's okay to shed tears. It's okay. Most of us have seen things that made us to shed tears. Even Jesus saw it in the Bible. But I've got good news for you. Your weeping may have stayed longer than expected. But I pray for you. I join my faith with your faith. To an end. Amen. The cry you cried this year, you will not cry. As we enter the next year, you will go back and go for that thing that made you cry. You will refuse to exercise patience. Little thing, we are angry. Little thing, we want more. Little thing, we regret. We forgot that patience is a virtue. Not everybody has it. It's a virtue. I remember a story of a woman that was praying for God for a child years ago. She would come, say God normal, say God normal. The day a man of God came, she wasn't in church. The man of God came. The, when, when the man of God was about rounding up, she was in church. But she stepped out. She stepped out. She has a place she always sits. The man of God was screaming on the altar. Yes, this woman, look at the angel with her baby. She wasn't there. May you not be missing on the day of your testimony. May you not be missing on the day God decides to give you that thing you've been praying for. Our calendar is not God's calendar. This is November. God will not be in November over there. We are in November. His calendar is different. You may say, okay, I've prayed for this thing for too long. I've prayed for this thing for two years. But in the sight of God, it's just two days. That's one thing people fail to understand. And that brings me to my first point this morning. If you must end tears, you must stop murmuring. You must not complain. You must not murmur. You must not murmur. Murmuring is bad. God hates it. God hates murmuring. That's my first point this morning. If you must end tears, you must stop murmuring. You must never murmur. God does not like murmuring. As a matter of fact, he killed some of the Israelites because of murmuring. You know read it? Because of murmuring. Murmuring does not give glory to God in any way. The strength you use in murmuring, use it to believe. Use it to activate your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. You must understand that trials in life happens to build your faith. To build our faith in Christ. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 2, yeah, it says, count it all joy when you fall into where? Divers. Who can tell me the meaning of divers? Let's break it down. Different kinds. That's in 
a lot, like deep. I don't know how to explain it, like bag of rice. Divers, plenty like that. Hallelujah. He says what? Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Then guess what? What does the last part say? What does the last part say? We don't know. Our God is able to deliver you from every temptation. Amen. Every temptation you fall into. Hallelujah. Amen. And this morning they will deliver you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I've written down here, I say, you must learn to exercise patience. I've said it before. Patience is a virtue. Pray God for it. Not everybody has patience. Not everybody. Pray God for it. We need it in our lives. Daily. Because we always fall into diverse temptation. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Quickly I rush to my to my um second point this morning. If you must end yes, you must stay clear from idols. Amen. This is the part I want to dwell on. Like I go sit down here. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Idols. What are what are idols? There are different kind of idols. Every one of us here, we have that thing we carry as idols. And God hates it. He also killed the children of Israelites because of that. Idols. God loved the Israelites so much that when they turn to idol, he kills them. That's to tell you the rate at which God frowns at it. Idols. I, I tell you, I said I will stay here. It could be your, your, your job. Or not to you. As I'm saying it now, let's all start repenting. Just even me as I'm talking to you because the word of God says, the word of God says it's sharper than two edges sword, piercing. He pierced you, he pierced me. So don't think because I'm the one saying it, he doesn't pierce, he pierced me too. Idols, God told me. He said, we should, he said, tell your people, they should stay clear from idols. What are idols? Anything you exalt above the name of God, anything you take serious, than the things of God, or you take serious that God is your idol. Call it anything. It could be your husband. It could be your wife. It could be your children. You carry them like God. Time for service, you are not there. Because you are worshipping your idol. Today is women's convention now. Some women are not here. They don't even care. In fact, that was up now for pastor, wife, and mama, Margaret. <laughs> I will say it because this is the thing that is eating us up to, in church. This is the thing that is eating up the children of God. They were, as I speak to you now, today is women's convention. If you are not here for women's convention, is it men's convention you will come and function? Please, if you see them, help me to ask them. This thing they tire me. If I don't was up, since we started posting the women's convention, women, they are still not here today. Maybe they are, they are at work. I do. I do. It's bad. Let's deviate from it. If you cannot function in your local church during a convention like this, forgetting that every program is put together for somebody, you may just be that person that program was put together for. And that is why you shouldn't take the things of God lightly. You must not worship I do. I do. You don't need to go and construct one thing behind your house. Back home, we see some houses, they construct some things on the side. Net two iron together. Put one, uh, this thing there. They say it's their hide. They put bottle, put can, can, put um, chassis, put all the, all the shinap there. They say it's their idol. You, you don't have to do that. This is America. In fact, if you do that now, they say you are doing Halloween. So there's no point. But what is that thing in your heart? That takes the place of God in your life. That is your idol. God spoke to me seriously about it. And he, and he warned me as well. And I'm telling you this morning. Whatever it is you put first before God. Cut it off. If not, tears cannot end. If you want your tears to end. You must be careful. And stay clear from idol. He said that shall not worship any other God. Besides me. He said, how long shall you hurt between two opinions? 
If God is God, serve him. If by is bar, serve him. And that is the problem we have today. Some are in church. Their leg is somewhere else. Abba, sister. I will say it all. I will say it. If you like, if you see me after now, don't talk to me. It's okay. I will talk to you. Now me and you. Women, let's wake up. God is about to do a new thing in our life, but let's give him the chance to do it. He said, how long will you hurt between two opinions? If God is God, serve him now. If by is by, serve him. If you want to serve idol, just forget. The problem is, we, we, so, so many women don't even, they don't understand, they don't even, they don't even know what exactly they want out of God. It's an error. Let's take care from idol, any form of idol. It could be your husband. It could be your children. It could be your job. It could be your business. Let's be careful of idol. Let's not allow idol to take the place of God. Hallelujah. I've written down here concerning um, the idol. I said, I said, what is an idol? Anything you place higher than God. Anything that takes the place of God in your life. It could be your education. Pastor, my school, my school, my school. The way they say school here, me tired. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The way people carry the school matter here. Time for church. You are not there. But why were you not in church? I, my school, my school, my forgetting that the person who gives you strength to attend that school is God. That is where we miss it. It could be your school. I just want to graduate. I want to come out with all the haze. I just want to, I just, I just want to do this. I just, Papa told us a story when he was in school. I went for a vigil. No, it's not right anyway. But at the end, God saved him. And the lecturer called him to his office and gave him his mark. That was God in action. God can bypass protocol for your sake in that school. You don't believe that. If you believe, you will say a better amen. You don't believe. My school. Ah, I just have to come up with that degree. Pastor, that's why I've not been in church. I'm just pursuing that school. I'm just pursuing that school. I've not been around for a while. Even the women convention, I'm not coming because of that school. That school. At the end of the day, you find out that so many of them took that time because they were working Monday to Saturday. They purposely choose Sunday for their lecture. It's bad. Let's change for meat. And I want to believe God that this morning, God will give us a change of heart. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Quickly. Number three says, if you must end tears in your life, you must be faithful in service. You must be faithful in service. I think I've already, um, I've already entered that, that point before. How faithful are you in service? How faithful are you in serving God? How faithful are you in the house of God? How consistent are you? Can your pastor look at you and say, no, that sister, was, that sister is very faithful. Something happened two weeks ago. Somebody was not in church. Pastor picked it. Pastor, some, people, some of the problem, America, God will help us in Jesus' name. May God help us in this country. Somebody can just come out in the morning, look at the weather. You are supposed to be in church. Maybe you, 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 let's say you vacuum. You are supposed to vacuum the church after service. Or you are supposed to take a solo in the choir. You just open the door. Hey, this winter, I beg you. They just go back to sleep. May God help us in Jesus' name. Back home, people are hungry for God. It's only in this country. People see coming to church and serving God as a big deal. People see it like they are assisting pastor. It's an error. It's an error. Let's stop it. And then you ask some of them, why have you not been faithful in your, in your, in your, in your service in, in, in church? Why have you not been faithful doing those things you used to do? They will tell you. They must have excuse, oh. They must, they must give you excuses. If they don't give you excuses, in fact, they are not real. Some will tell you, those that, those that have, that, that have really, really gone far in that, that their hardiness of heart, they will tell you, 
I just want to serve God in my heart. <laughs> so many people don't go to church. I just want to, church is in my house. People, that person talking to, has never gone for evangelism. If you are serving God in your heart, how many times have you gone out on your own for evangelism? That is somebody who works Monday to Sunday night. To tell you, this is, this is something you used to do. Why don't you do it again? Why don't you? Don't worry. I just want to serve God in my house. And God is in my heart. Is God not in the heart? Yes, God is in the heart. So what service are you rendering to God in your heart now? You've never gone out for evangelism. Even you are watching online, you, never, you even doing praise, you don't even clap. You are either cooking in the kitchen or you are lying down on the bed, typing your phone. Let's stop all these things. Let's stop it. God hates it. Drop it. Let's drop it. Let's tell ourselves the truth. When online service started, I was the one that initiated. I, 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 told, I told Pastor, I said, it requires to be going, you know, to encourage. Because I was tired. I stayed at home for, I think for like four, four weeks or five weeks. It got to a point I got tired. Because where the service is going on, something else is distracting me. Let's be real. You must be distracted. Okay, if you don't go to church, let's say you are among those who, who clean the chairs, for example. And then you, don't, you are not there to do it. Because you are, you are at home, you want to watch online or whatever. I'm not against it, so please don't get me wrong. Thank God the COVID is coming to an end. We will see the end of this COVID. We saw the beginning and we will see the end. I'm talking to you in the name of Jesus. Our lives are coming back to normal. Where people can come to the house of God. Praise God and, and worship him in the beauty of his holiness. If you want to roll, you can roll. Not those ones we do at home. Our president, so many people say he's not a Christian. Some say he's a Christian. Well, I don't care to know. Whatever he says is in line with God. So I'm in support of him in a way. He said something during Easter. He said, I'm thinking of opening back the churches. He said, I understand people watch online, but it's different when you are there in life in the service. And then he said, let's open up the churches. Our governor should concur. I'm not telling you this because I'm a pastor's wife. I'm not saying all this. I'm telling you how things ought to be. Before I became a pastor's wife, I was a young girl. We were crazy for God. Back home in Awuchi, Papa would tell you. Recently, Papa made mention of it again. In one of the crusades he came. We were, just, we were coming down from an elevator. He was telling somebody, you know, you do, do you know her then in, in, in the headquarters choir? I'm not bragging. Now we, they stay for front. It's not now. Papa, you, it's not now that Papa closes on time. Then Papa will start service from 6 a.m. We'll close by 5 p.m. We will stand there. Now we the back up. Guess what? It pays. Let's make God our priority. If only you can have a change of heart. Make God a priority and see God work wonders in your life. If only you can remain constant and faithful to him, to your service. Are you faithful in your service to God? That department God has called you to work. Are you faithful there? Are you faithful? If you are not, let's begin to have a repentance heart this morning. Because God is set to do a new thing in this house. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. In the name of Jesus. Be faithful in service. Don't let anybody deceive you. Do not. Do not. Ask God. If you are not yet doing anything, ask him. Say, God, where exactly do you want me to work for you in your house? He will tell you. He will direct you. Amen. One of our sisters came, she was with us. She's always in the service and everything, you know, but she wasn't in the department. One day she called me. She said, I, I think I want to join the ushers. I said, that would be good. As I speak to you now, she has joined. Do not procrastinate. Don't keep saying it. And don't join and leave again.
don't join and say, I was there before. Maybe I was, I was in the choir. I, I'm in the choir. I don't think I'm in the choir. I don't. Some people are there, but they are not there. Let's not be everywhere. Be known for something. Hallelujah. Back then in school, I wasn't the lead singer. I wasn't a soloist. I don't even have a solo voice. But we can back up. We can stand for hours. While Papa is preaching, we will stand. You don't see it. It's not now. I see them. Some of the things that the choir do, I'm shocked. They go and sit down. When Papa is moving around the crowd, we are standing. We don't see it. Except you want to go and use the battery, you use and you come back. And your using of battery should not be more than once in a service. Yes. Yes. I'm not telling you. Papa was telling somebody at the elevator some, some uh, months ago. He said, do you know, I said this once. He said, they back up. They back me up then. He said, they will stand for hours. And the person was like, oh, I know her then. I know her then. He knew what he was talking about. We used to stand in front. Hours. I'm not telling you minutes. Trust Papa. I'm rounding up soon. I'm rounding up soon. I'm rounding up soon. I'm rounding up soon. Papa keeps rounding up, rounding up, rounding up. We will be there. He is moving. He is moving. Some of the pastors in the pastor's seat, when they're tired, they see it. The reason why they ask us to stand, because Papa can raise a song, a song at any time. And if he raises a song, nobody's backing him up. We are in trouble. I'm rounding up soon. He keeps saying it. In our mind, we like this, man, round up. <laughs> round up. We'll go for fire night. We'll start fire night by 10. By 10 p.m. 6 a.m. We are still there. I'm rounding up soon. There was one day Papa closed fire night. Environmental people were already outside. They started holding people. Some of us that our houses were far, you, as you are walking, you meet environmental. Where are you coming from? Oh, and I said, that apostle, go. This is the apostle children. You just go. Just go. That's to tell you the time. Environmental back home start by 8. Back home, it start by 8. I think every last Saturday. But we were there. We were serving. We were serving. And when you serve, don't put anything out. Don't put anything in mind. Don't say, God, I want to serve because I want you to do this. Don't condition God. Do not condition God. On no account should we condition God. Mm -mm. Just serve out of your heart. Serve. Keep serving. Keep serving. The reward is waiting for you. You may not reap all the rewards. Your children will. Your children will. Hallelujah. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. I pray God will help us to be faithful in service. Just lift up your hand and say, Lord, help me. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to be faithful in service. Service to you. Service in your house. In the name of Jesus. God will help us this morning. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There are several aspects of life you have to be faithful in. How faithful are you? How faithful are you in tithing? The question was asked. He said, have we robbed you? God said, you ask me if I've robbed you. If you've robbed me. Yes, you've robbed me. You've robbed, you've robbed me in tithing what? Offerings. Some people have robbed God. So many of us have robbed God. If God must end tears in our lives, we must not rob God. We must not rob God. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm using myself as, a, as an example because I'm the greatest example I can, I can show myself. Somebody said to me, oh, when they dash you money, you still pay tight. I said, well, I don't know about you. I just, by God's grace, I just started doing one minimal job and all of that. Small, small thing. I just started like, let's say like two months ago. But before then, I've always paid my tithes. Whether I'm working or not, I don't joke with my tithe. Even as a young child, a young girl growing up, I don't joke. God bear me record, I don't joke with my tithes. You give me money, I must pay tight from it. I'm not saying you must do that, but how can you rob God? You work, you get your pay, you don't pay your tithes. What kind of Christian are you? 
I love what one, one of our daughters said here when she was giving testimony when she gave birth to her first child. She said something that shocked me. I was sitting here. She said when, they were, um, when she was about to give birth, there were complications and all of that. The daughters were coming to her, telling her different things. And she said to them, I will give birth to my baby Norma because I'm a tighter. What have you to remind God of when that time comes? When situation of life hits you, what do you have in your power, in your, in your bank to, re to remind God of? What have you put there? What service have you put there? Will you be the one that will say, God, I'm the one that I sing in that church. I sing with the whole of my heart. You can't put me to shame. Or will you be the one that say, God, please don't put me to shame. Which one will you be? Will you be that one that will say, God, I'm a tighter. I can't die like a chicken. Will you be able to say that? Will you be able to say, Lord, I've served you with the whole of my being. I can't go through this shame alone. You must go with me or you deliver me. Will you be able to say that to yourself? She said, to, she said, she said it during her testimony years ago when she gave birth to her first. She said, she said she said to herself, I'm a tighter. I can't go through this mess. And guess what? God is able exceedingly abundantly to supply your needs. Yeah, and whatever you need, just be faithful. Just be focused. Don't be here and there. Don't be everywhere. Don't be everywhere. Be known for something. Let people look at that, at that, that department and say, no, this sister, this brother, we missed him. Because why? He was faithful or she was faithful. I was telling you something. Our pastor picked somebody. The brother is not even, she, he's not really, um, he's not in the department kind of. The sister is. Two Sundays ago, they were not in church. We got to pastor and said, these people were not in church. I was shocked. That is service. That is service. What are you leaving for your children to remember about you in the house of God? What are you leaving? What will your children look at and say, oh, mommy was the one in charge of this. Daddy was, in, if you ask my children now at home, they were arguing one day. I heard them arguing. Ha, who prays more in this house? One said, I think daddy prays more. Daddy will not allow us to sleep. Every night he's praying downstairs. Every night. He puts on the, t the, the, the radio, sorry, the, the TV. He increased the volume. I'll be sleeping, I'll be hearing it in my dream. I think daddy prays more. I said, no, mommy prays. No, mommy prays, but mommy does not pray that much. I think daddy, they were just arguing. In my mind, I said, oh, sister, you need to wake up. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm the, I'm the biggest example to myself. But guess what? He's already making a name for the children to remember. Every one of us, we are unique in our own way. If you also ask them the things I do, they will tell you, mommy does this more than daddy. What are you living for your children, spiritually? Standing here today, my mom is no more alive, but I can tell you that woman prayed. She prayed. My dad would be snoring. The man don't travel. The woman will wake all of us. So it's always like that. It must not be 50-50, but you can try your own little way. Hallelujah. If you ask them now, who pays attention to the kids in church more? Daddy or mommy? They will tell you, mommy, am I wrong? That's my children. I'm talking about my kids now. If you ask them in church, who pays attention to the kids more? Mommy or daddy? They'll tell you, mommy now. I'm unique in my way. May God make you unique in your ways. Amen. That your children will look back and remember something spiritual. Something good in the house of God about you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Quickly, I rush to my third. Um, I have just two points left. The third one says, okay, sorry, I've, I've gone through the third one. That's the, let me go through the, the, the last one. The last one says, never underestimate the power of prayer. Hallelujah. I think that brings me to, that's my last point today. Never under, underestimate the power of prayer. If you can pray, something must happen. 
The disciples met Jesus. They didn't say, teach us how to, how to make money. They didn't say, teach us how to go to, to job. They didn't say, teach us how to go to school even. Yes. They said what? Teach us to pray. So Kaba. If you can pray, that year is coming to an end. If you can pray, your secret years will be wiped out forever. In the name of Jesus. And we must understand that our tears don't move God. Our tears don't move God. The Bible said if you, if you have faith as small as the mustard seed, you will do what? You move mountains. It didn't say if you cry and fool that bucket. No. Even where we, we shed tears, whatever, go through things, we must understand, we must have it at the back of our mind that our tears do not move God, but our faith does. Our faith does. How strong is your faith? How strong is your belief as a woman? In the life of that, your children, you've been believing God for, for a turnaround. How strong is your belief? In your expectations, how strong is your faith? How prepared are you? Because if you have faith, you will be prepared to receive what the Lord is about to give. How prepared are you? How strong are you? How is your faith? Are you that type that you go through things and somebody talks you off it? Oh, I just came to that church. I was going through this thing. I didn't even know. And then a woman just came to me. The way she spoke to me. Oh, man, I'm not going to that church again. You are faithless. You are believing God for a thing. Your faith is supposed to be activated. No matter what anybody does, shouldn't discourage you at all. You should remain focused until you get your blessing, until your change comes. And this morning, your change is coming. There will be no more loss in your life. There will be no more shame in your life. There will be no more tears in your life. Activate your faith this morning. When you go through difficulties of life, never give up so easily. Allow the problem to give up. And guess what? If you don't give up, the problems usually give up. I've experienced it. I don't know about you. I know so many people. I must have experienced that. Do not be that type that gives up easily. Little thing, you are shaking. Little thing. Please, I'm tired. I'm tired. I've been pray I love my sister's testimony. Sister, God bless you. It's like God brought you here today to come and uh, prepare the mind of, of God's people concerning the message I'm about to preach. When she was talking, I said, this woman has almost entered. She, 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 she's almost going there. I've never met her. Hallelujah. But guess what? That's to tell you the spirit is at work. God is about to do something. In your life, in your businesses, in your education, in your job, whatever it is, your secret years, God is about to end it. That years you cried last month, the things that made you shed tears last month, I pray this morning that the Lord put an end to it. This month, even if you are to share any tears, it will be the tears of joy. The prayers you pray this year, you will not pray them next year. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this women convention mark a turn around in your life. You will look back and remember and say, God, you've wiped my tears. That will be your testimony. That will be your testimony. And that will be our testimony in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Can you stand on your feet this morning? One prayer. One prayer. You're going to pray this prayer with every fiber in you. One prayer. Lift up your hands of fire. Lift up your hands of fire this morning. Say, oh God, my father. Help me. To be faithful to you. Help me. To be faithful in your house. Help me. To be faithful in my doings. With you. Open your mouth and turn that to prayer. Open your mouth and ask him. 
is here is going to give you the strength. The strength to be faithful in everything you do. It's coming upon somebody this morning. Open your mouth. Don't close your mouth at this time. We all need the grace to be faithful in service. Because if we can be faithful, we will not worship any idol other than God. If we can be faithful in all that we do in service, God will look, uh, will look down on us and have mercy. And our secret tears will be wiped up forever. Open your mouth and turn that to prayer this morning. Help us, oh God. Help us, ancient of days. Thank you, Abba Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Lastly, just lift up your hands. Say, oh God, help me to activate my faith. Help me to activate my faith. May I not give up before my testimony. May I not lose hope before my testimony comes. Open your mouth and ask God this morning. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. I can't hear your voice. Sir. May your strength not fail you. Open your mouth. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me, oh God. May my strength not fail me before you bring my change. May my strength not fail me before you bring my testimony. Open your mouth this morning and ask God for that. For in Jesus' name we've prayed. God bless you.